What is radar? This is where we share what we're paying attention to uh, and what we use to help plan, like what our next conference is, what our next topic is, uh, what we think is going to be happening in the world around us. And we do a lot of trend analysis and um, use a com combination of qualitative and quantitative methods and external and internal data. And Nikki was just talking about Safari, and that is one of our internal data sources. And we use that to help figure out trends and, and topics. What I'm going to share is some of what we find from search and usage on the platform. So for those of you who don't know much about the platform, it's 50,000 plus titles. There's text, video, audio, interactive stuff, live online training. So it's really multimodal. And it's a pretty big group of people, two and a half million uh, users. That's made up of 5,100 different uh, companies. A lot of big companies, 60% have more than 10,000 employees, 68,000 individual uh, users. And what happens is a lot of them are doing things like in an order, you know, start to finish, but many of them are kind of nonlinear and are just going in to find the answer to a particular question. And while they come from all sorts of verticals, they're kind of concentrated in consulting, finance, banking, software, and computers. And even the consulting companies that are small are probably working for big, um, you know, big uh, firms. So this is kind of an enterprise scale audience. And um, when you, I show you the results of things that we're looking at. Consider the uh, maturity, because newer tech gets more attention. Uh, things that are mature, generally people already know them. Uh, tech also takes time. I'm going to talk some about what's going on with cloud. It's been around long enough, but there's plenty of uh, uh, kind of like legs in it. It looks almost emergent. And pay attention to the scale of things, because some things are big. Small things tend to be more volatile. Um, and I'll talk about search now. It, the search data, we have two and plus million uh, searches a year. Some are very specific. So I can look at top searches, talk a little about what programming language is and some ML AI topics. So when we look at the top searches, um, I just want to explain this chart quickly. On the left, you'll see that the, uh, the names of the uh, search terms, their rank, whether the rank changed a lot. The red uh, horizontal bars represent the magnitude, and then the chart to the right of that is the um, change. So the more to the right the green bar is, big change up, red means change down. So when we look at what's going on here, two things really stand out. Kubernetes is the fastest growing big topic, and blockchain is also uh, a big topic here. When we look at things that are more in the kind of velocity space, we see that AWS interest is growing, uh, we see a little decline with Docker and microservices, but I think there's something going on that I'll explain later. I'm going to show that there's some evidence going on around changes in architecture. Um, if you look carefully at the first chart, you probably would have noticed that there's some JavaScript frameworks and a JavaScript framework. If you put those all together, it puts JavaScript at top in Java, but it doesn't change that JavaScript is down a little bit while uh, Java and Python are up. Again, we see this as evidence of something that's, um, that's going on. Um, when we just look at programming languages, we've already gone over what the top ones are, but these are the ones that are growing the fastest, Go, Kotlin, and Rust. Now, Kotlin and Rust are pretty small base, uh, but clearly people are, are looking into them and, and paying some attention uh, to them. Now, in machine learning, and I, I was happy to hear how much machine learning was covered in, in this conference. I think it's going to be something you're all going to have to pay more attention to over time. Uh, TensorFlow is the most well-known thing, but you can see there's a slight decline in that. And what is going on is these kind of uh, smaller things are maybe getting a little more attention these days. They're newer and there's something to explore. So Keras, PyTorch, and the concept of reinforcement learning, which is something that I think is, is really worth watching. Hey, that was search, which is like a little more real time and, and kind of bigger topics. So now we'll talk about usage. And this kind of represents the kind of interest intensity. And we'll talk about how it breaks down in general and then some specific things. So about 80% of the usage on Safari is for generally tech topics. And software development is the biggest one. Um, and then kind of your topic here, the velocity topic, data, web mobile. Now what's going on is there seems to be movement towards software development and data, uh, and a little bit away from um, 
the web ops kind of uh, web ops and uh, some of the DevOps topics. Again, I think this is more evidence of what's going on with uh, changing architectures. Um, so when we look at the usage, the top topics, we see AWS with this big growth and big increase in interest. So the cloud, despite having been around for so long, for this enterprise-oriented audience, is really getting a lot more um, traction. Uh, we also see ML and AI is the next biggest growing topic and, and probably not a surprise uh, given all the hype and actually all the implementation we see around it. So I'm going to go into a little specifics on the cloud in general. Um, when we look at overall cloud topics, um, it's up quite a bit. That's up about 70%. AWS, as I mentioned, is up 200%. Azure which is about half the usage as uh, AWS isn't growing as fast, and Google Cloud from this very small base is, um, is growing at about 100% year over year um, on there. Now, with programming languages, we see the same thing going on at top, the, the same three. And I think what we're seeing here is a real coalescing around these, uh, these top languages. Uh, we also see the slight decline in JavaScript and then the increases in, uh, in Java and Python. We also see the same uh, emerging languages, ones that are showing a lot of growth uh, there. So this is kind of reinforcing what we saw in um, search. I also want to point out that C is, is up here as still a pretty popular language. And we think that that's partly uh, what's going on with C is around ML and AI, where a lot of the uh, code underneath the bindings are done in um, uh, C language. Now we also see Kubernetes is up 200%, blockchain is up 450%. So these are things people are definitely exploring. And the one thing about Kubernetes that we think is interesting, because we've been tracking things for a while with ML and AI, a lot of people go in and kind of test the waters. You know, how does TensorFlow work? How does neural networks work and try things out? But we don't think people go into Kubernetes casually. Kubernetes is really for implementation. And the big growth in it, both in search and usage, is really telling to us. And I'll be talking about that a little on the next slide. Um, so what we're seeing is the cloud is a pretty important topic on the uh, platform. We're also seeing that in uh, the kind of ML space, that it's a growing space, and we're seeing that while TensorFlow is clearly the most popular implementation, that things like Keras and reinforcement learning and PyTorch are, are worth uh, paying some attention to. Now we'll come to this thing. I've got this next architecture up here. I've been presenting this evidence, JavaScript down, um, Kubernetes, this big increase. We see the languages kind of changing you know, the distribution. What we think is going on is that there is a cloud-based microservices architecture that allows a lot more flexibility in how development is done that is going to be the kind of next architecture. And what we mean by next architecture is that when you have that next project, this is likely the architecture you're going to be using. It has so many great features that we've been hearing about this whole conference and hopefully you've been learning about it in the sessions uh, for building these big scale things and really meeting a lot of great business needs, you know, the kind of feature flexibility, feature agility, being able to scale and so forth. So we really think the evidence is, is there that uh, this is a direction that we're going to be paying a lot of very close uh, attention to. The last thing is just that blockchain is so, uh, you know, showing up and so hyped these days. Now, we don't really know what's going to happen with blockchain. I think the notion of distributed trust has some really interesting prospects. But what we suggest with it is that a lot of people are paying attention to it and that you probably should too. And just develop your own opinions on, uh, on what you see there. So that's the end. Thank you. If you have any questions or comments about this, please email me and uh, enjoy the rest of the conference.